Welcome back to part two of Message from an Angel. I'm coming to you from Wat Prapatom Chedi, also known locally as Kumpa. Uh, so it occurred to me that I should give you a little bit more backstory about, uh, about this, what I'm doing here. Uh, it's called Message from an Angel. <clears throat> Let me explain to you uh, why it's why it's called that first. Uh, I made some notes here to help me get through this. So uh, bear bear with me. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah. First, I want to apologize for my scruffiness. Uh, I'm usually quite well groomed and. When I was an English teacher, of course, I, I looked at the part, uh, but uh, shaving in barbers cost money, so uh, I've been avoiding those things. And also, I, I like it. <laughs> I, like, I like the scruffiness, uh, but I did grab a couple a pair of scissors and I tried to trim, trim it up a little bit. Um, okay, and... Uh, Yesterday I already told you that I met and fell in love with a girl on the Appalachian Trail. I'm going to give you a little bit more of the story about that. So this might this might be a, ow, can't. So this might be a long video if you're if you're not into sappy romance stuff, maybe you want to skip this part. Uh, in uh, when I was 35 or 30 yeah, 35 uh, 19 in 1998 I was going through some uh, personal rough time. Uh, I had no direction. I had no love in my life, had had no love in my life for 10 years. Uh, I had no hope of a future. Uh, I was stuck in a rut. I was running a printing press, making just barely enough to survive. Uh, I saw no end in sight to this life. Uh, suicide was off the table. That's another story. I'll get into another time, maybe. Thought about checking myself into a mental hospital, but I wasn't really crazy, and that just didn't seem to work. Uh, I also thought about just uh, going and becoming a hermit, living in the woods somewhere. Uh, so sometime in, uh, the, in late 1998, I decided that I was going to go do a long distance hike on the Appalachian Trail. And so uh, I quit my job and uh, took my dog. I had a dog and I... Uh, and so on the first day of spring 1999, I, I set on the first 300 miles from Springer Mountain to hot springs. Hope that's right. It's been a long time. It's been 20 years, so I might get the names wrong. But anyways, I, I did that in 96, so I didn't want to go and hike that part again, so I went back and started where I'd left off. Well, uh, so for about a week, I was on my own with my dog. I had my dog, Sadie. She was an amazing dog. She went with me the, the whole way. And uh, I, one day this, this young woman comes into the camp, and, uh, and even though she was extremely attractive, I really thought she was too young for me. I thought she was 17 or 18 years old, and she was with her mom, so I, di I didn't pay her any attention. But uh, one, one day at a, uh, at a hostel, I noticed she was paying a lot of attention to me. And I thought that was really strange because there were, I was 35, she was 25. Actually, she was 25. And she was very attractive, especially on the trail. There aren't many women on the trail. There aren't many attractive women on the trail who are single and available. So there were literally hundreds of guys pursuing her. 
I was ignoring her. Maybe that's one of the reasons why she was attracted to me. So as we were talking one day at a picnic table, I had an overwhelming urge to kiss her. It was like I had to stop myself because we were kind of close to each other talking and I just had to stop myself there. Uh, So after, uh, after like one day there in this hostel, we kind of, we hit it off and, and she was definitely flirting with me. I figured that out. And, uh, but uh, it was time for me to go. And she was having some trouble with her feet. So she stayed there for a couple more days to try to doctor up her feet. And uh, the next place we stopped, I want to say Damascus, okay? I, I, if I got these names wrong, then forgive me, but the next stop was Damascus. And I, so on the trail, I, I was one, um, I was a couple days ahead of her. And it's a week, a week trek between where we started and where we ended, it was one week. Uh, I was hiking alone and there are these, these uh, trail logs and you, you write in, you know, what you did that day, where you're going and stuff like that. And uh, when I, I arrived in Damascus, there were a few other people I know who were hiking around with her. And I was in Damascus one day, she didn't arrive. Two days, she still didn't arrive. Around the third day, people who were around her group about her started coming in. And I, every time someone would show up, I'd say, uh, where's Angel? Uh, have you seen Angel? And they're like, no, nah, man, she's in a lot of pain. Her feet are really bad. She's, she's way behind. And then finally, sorry about that. My phone ran out of memory. I just cleared a bunch of stuff. or probably cleared a bunch of important stuff. I don't care. I want to get this out. So I was just about to say that while I was sitting there waiting for her, there she comes around the corner. And uh, I had been asleep. Sadie started barking, woke me up, and uh, I was a little bit worried how she's going to take this, that was I stalking her, you know, who's this 35-year-old man who's waiting for me all alone on the, on the trail, but she was happy, she was elated to see me, and she was, she was struggling, she was limping, I offered to take her pack, she said no, um, but I gave her a smoke of my pipe, which relieve some of the pain and we, we hiked the last two or three miles together talking and laughing and both of us so happy to see each other again and uh, so we kind of had a date that night we, we went out to dinner uh, afterwards it was a beautiful night we found this little playground it had a swing set she said she says oh I love swings and we go and we're sitting on the swings and we're talking and uh, I'm kind of telling her about these feelings I'm having for her. And she just, out of the blue, comes, just kisses me and <laughs> completely blows my mind because, I, yeah, I just wasn't expecting that. And uh, so then I suggest that uh, her and I uh, become partners. Let's, let's do this. So uh, I went through her pack. She had all kinds of shit she didn't need. She had this big, huge knife she was carrying around. We each had a tent, so we, we, we split it up, and we got her packed down much lighter. Her socks were all wrong. I got her new socks, and, uh, and uh, we spent the next six months just about hiking together. Right now, I'd like to get into uh, when I started to believe that she was an actual angel, not just her trail name, and why. Okay, uh, the idea that she was an actual angel who came to Earth solely to save me because she did. Um, my time with her completely turned me around that and walking 1,700 miles. Um, changed my body, changed my mind, changed my spirit, it changed everything about who I was and what I believed I was and I, 
I was just a totally different person. I was had so much confidence. Oh, and we were corresponding through emails and stuff, and, and she'd gone to live in Indonesia. She had actually met and married an Indonesian guy who I call Mowgli because he was this little dark-skinned guy, and, and I was jealous, of course. And But she, she kept... She, one of her emails, she's like, Scott, you have to get the fuck out of America. Come to Southeast Asia. She didn't say where. She didn't say come you know, to Indonesia. She's like, you just have to do this. And uh, so I ended up doing that through some, some coincidences and things that led me here to Thailand. And uh, so I was in Thailand, and, you know, I was having fun. Uh, lots of girls girlfriend so I really wasn't thinking about her because after all she was married in the back of my mind I I knew we would be together again someday I whether just to meet or actually I thought we would be together I figured the Mowgli would go away someday and then she and I would or her and I would get back together uh, and then on Boxing Day or 26 of December 2004 I was in bed with a bit of a hangover, and my bed was rocking, and I was alone. So I'm like, what's this? And I get up, and I start hearing about the, the waves hitting Indonesia, and still it didn't dawn on me at first that she was there. And then I, I thought about her one day. This was like months later, and I'm like, oh, shit. She was living in a bamboo hut just like two kilometers from the sea in Banda Acha. That's where the biggest waves hit. So I got online. I, I sent emails to her last email address. I searched for her name as far as victims. I, I searched and searched and searched. And then every year, every few months, for years I searched. Other people searched. I sent, uh, I, I sent uh, letters to her last known address, to her where her parents lived. She was an only child, and her parents had moved. One of the emails came back, and a woman started corresponding with me. At first, she said she was Anna, and I was so happy. I said, "Oh my God, you're you're alive, you're okay." And then, after talking to her, I realized it wasn't her. There's somebody who was faking being her. What a cruel thing to do. And then I had this flashback to the Appalachian Trail. I was lying in my hammock somewhere, relaxing, and she snuggled up with me. And she had her headphones on. We had radios, little radios, and she pulled her headphones off and she put them on my head. And it was Sarah McLaughlin playing. And uh, it was the arms of an angel. And that's normally not my kind of music. And normally I would have said, nah, no, no thanks. I don't want to listen to that. I'd rather listen to nature. But, uh, but this feeling of comfort came over me. Plus, she was snuggling with me there on the, on the hammock. And this incredible sense of, of peace and protection. So, <clears throat> so there was that. Okay. And uh, not only that, there were, there were a lot of other things, okay? Her appearance. That's why she got the, the trail name, Angel. She had long, straight, strawberry blonde hair. She had this tall, thin, sinewy body. Uh, she had an aura that drew people in. People just loved her. And... Uh, and so, yeah, so she disappeared after 26 December 2004. And that's why now I just, now is the time. And then I, okay, then the dream about I had about her the other night. And I'd just been telling somebody I was thinking about using my tarot cards to try to find out what happened. So that's what we're here to do. And, uh, Unfortunately, I think we're not going to do the reading right now. I think there has to be a part three because I'm going to have to go home, edit this video, I'll upload it, and then hopefully come back today and 
and actually do the card reading. Okay, bear with me. I'm sorry it's taking so long to get this this done.